Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today I'm going to show you how to configure the intrusion prevention service on a SonicWall Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. Okay, intrusion prevention is actually pretty straightforward to configure. There's really not much to it. The first thing you'll want to do is go to the global IPS settings here under policy, security services, and then intrusion prevention. Okay, we've got some information here related to the IPS signature database. And then there's a simple toggle button here to turn it on. Once it's turned on, let's skip over to the signatures page quickly here. And what we can see is that each IPS signature gets a priority assigned to it. Well, you can call it a severity or a risk, depending on what term you want to use. Okay, so some IPS signatures are deemed to be protecting a high-risk priority threat, while, of course, some are going to be of the low and medium priorities. All right, and the reason why I'm showing you this is if we move back over to the status tab and look below, we get the option to enable or disable both detection and prevention of the three priorities I just mentioned. Okay, so what I would recommend you doing is to at a minimum have detect and enable prevented or detect and prevent enabled for high and medium priority attacks. For the low priority attacks, I would suggest maybe enabling detect and prevent, but also mention that obviously the more signatures the IPS engine has to compare traffic against, the more overhead there is on the CPU, and therefore the more latency you could introduce into the IPS engine. So if in the future you do find your network growing to the point where the firewall is reaching near to its performance capabilities, one of the things you can do to mitigate this is to disable low priorities, okay? Now, if you're wondering how security is going to look with the low priorities disabled, that's where you'd go back over to the signatures tab and scroll through all the signatures to see exactly what's going to be excluded from the IPS engine, okay? And then if I click configure, I get some options like the ability to select hosts or networks to exclude from the IPS engine. Nothing too fancy there. <laughs> All right, and then if I want to go back over to the signatures tab, what I'll just do is grab this drop down and just select category to kind of filter things so we see each IPS signature category. All right, and then if I just pick a random category and follow it all the way over to the right here, I'll get this little edit button. So here is where I can configure sort of, sort of global options for this category. So it would obviously cover each signature that's categorized under that category. Okay, so global options give me the ability to either enable or disable, detect, and prevent for the entire category, as well as the option to exclude or include specific users or user groups or even IP address ranges from the category we have selected. So maybe if I don't have any database service on my network, I could disable both detect and prevent for the SQL injection category as a whole. Okay. And then if I filter things back so I'm showing every signature and then hit the edit button again, you'll get the exact same options you saw for the category as you do for each signature. So again, giving you the ability to disable or set exclusions on a per signature basis. All right, and at this point, the IPS engine or the IPS configuration is completed. So similar to other security services, the only other thing I would have to do is to go over to the zone section and ensure that the zone I want to apply the IPS signature to is ticked, under, ticked off under IPS. And of course it is by default for the LAN and WAN zones. All right. And then if I go over to under my access rules, 
pick an access, pick a random access rule, and then move over to the security profiles tab. I'll see this little DPI button. Okay, so DPI includes the IPS engine as well as anti-spyware and antivirus. So if I find I want to disable those security services, including IPS, of course, from any traffic hitting an access rule, I can open up that specific access rule and tick this little button off here, okay? And this would be done for traffic, which in most cases doesn't do so well when you introduce latency into the mix. Things like uh, UDP VoIP related traffic, okay? And then once that's done, IPS is pretty much set up and ready to go. So that will be the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.